Hey everyone, today we're going to be making a left center right delay using Redelay. So in this project, I have um, a sort of clap, snare kind of sound. It sounds like this. Kind of a noise burst, uh, clap slash snare sound. The entire drum mix sounds like this. By the way, all of those sounds come from Reactor 6, uh, the free kick instrument they have. I've made some hi-hats and claps and uh, snares um, out of that kick instrument. So all the instruments together sounds like this. So what I want to do to improve this mix is to add some sort of movement with the delays uh, on that clap sound. So I think one simple way to add movement, add some interest, some sort of counterpoint to what's going on with the very static chords, the kind of steady beat, is to have some delay doing that, adding movement. All right, so I'm going to make a new track. I'm just going to put it after the clap track. I'm going to call it delay. I will insert re-delay. So I'm going to turn the delay uh, dry fader all the way down because um, we're already hearing this clap through its own track. I'm going to take the routing button and drag it onto the delay track. And now we have a, a send. And I guess a minus six is fine. So here's what we have so far. You can't really hear that delay because it's this is the first note, this is the second note, and that delay from the first note, uh, that repeat happens right there. So we don't want that to happen. We want this to be, I'm, I'm thinking in the off beats, kind of uh, more like 16th notes. So the uh, musical time length in re-delay works in divisions of eighth notes. It's kind of weird. Don't know why they do that. But the first one we want is 0 0.5. And so I want the delay to go starting on the left and yeah, and in the first 16th note after a hit. So you can hear that delay repeating on the left side. We could use the feedback control. That makes more repeats on that left side, but I'm going to take advantage of the tap options in Redelay to add more delays. So click on Add Tap. It's going to copy all the settings we just had from tab one. And now we just adjust this so we can create our second repeat. And so this will be at one eighth note. And I will pan it to the center. So we got left center. And then one more at 1.5. Now we need to make this a little more musical, more mix friendly, and that's going to be by using the low pass filter and setting this something like, yeah, 4.6K. And I'll just use a little bit of high pass filtering. I'll just kind of do roughly the same settings, but not exactly the same settings um, for each of these. And if we set this earlier, uh, before we made the taps, um, then all those settings would have been brought in. So let's hear this with a bit of high and low filtering. Now we can also adjust the volume of that third hit, which I think is a little bit loud, so about a, one dB lower. Something else we can do, which is maybe a subtle effect, but we can change the stereo width of the incoming signal. It started out as stereo, and we can have it through three separate mono delays using this. Yeah. 
And you kind of hear it most in the center delay. Let's solo that tap and put it back to full stereo. And then put it back to zero. So it gets smaller, it, it sums it down to mono. I think that's going to be a better effect. Um, so here's what we have in the mix. And without. Going further with this, there's two approaches that I want to try. The first is making it not quite perfectly in time. So doing this um, at a 0 0.48 and let's do 0 0.98 and uh, 1.48. Uh, that should be a fairly subtle effect, um, but I think that might make it stand out a bit on its own, which could be good, could be bad. It's kind of subtly different. Let's also try it a little bit longer. So 0 0.52 and uh, 1.02 and 1 1.52. So again, it's a fairly subtle effect, but it can kind of push or pull things in a certain way. We could have the second one earlier, like uh, 0 0.95. And you can just kind of affect the groove very slightly in that way. Um, having it not exactly in eighth note divisions means that it's going to be separate when um, a new clap happens. So that might be worth doing. The other thing I wanted to show you is um, how we could repeat this. So it goes left, center, right, and then we will go back to the middle with tap two. And so that's now tap four. That's going to be in the middle again. And uh, what was our timing? 152. So it's going to be, let's do 202. And we're going back to the uh, to the left, so that's going to be tab, tap one. Click on add tap, and that's now tap five, which will be at 2.48. Then we go back to tap three, which is on the right side, add, and that is going to, let's do 2.97. Okay, and with each of these, let's say taps four, five, and six, I'm going to set these at, let's set them at minus six. So just a little bit quieter. And let's hear how that sounds. Now solo those. And so you can take these um, final delays and maybe filter them at like 2,500, right? Yeah, 2,500 instead of 4K. I think that's pretty good for a stock plugin. Uh, it's a moving effect. It works really well with the track. It was simple to set up and we can always save it as a preset. The whole point of this was just to show you that, that you can get a lot of interesting sounds out of this delay plugin. You can use the tap um, function and you just have to double or um, add half to the musical value to get more, more repeats um, in between and also vary the musical time or also use the uh, 
the regular time adjustment in milliseconds to add a little bit of variety to those repeats so that they don't um, exactly match the original sound. So that's where I'm going to end it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.